Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Andrew Heal with the latest from Denver 7. Continuing to rise as the water levels go up, so does the threat for major flooding in our state. Right now in Lake City, sandbags are being distributed to help protect homes. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez went there to see some of the challenges they're facing. You can see I'm standing on some of that snowpack right now. Officials tell me if this was their only concern, it wouldn't be a huge issue. What does worry them is the large amounts of debris left behind by avalanches. If it were just the snowpack, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. Michael Davis with the Hensdale Unified Coordination Group is in Lake City to help the community prepare for possible flooding. One of the ways is through sandbag distribution. When that snowpack melts, it's going to cause a rise in the rivers. We've got the Henson and the Lake Fork. That by itself would be enough to result in some minor flooding in the community. The debris that was left behind by avalanches is one of the city's main concerns. In the last 39 days, the hidden treasure dam was blown to pieces so trees won't get stuck and accumulate easily. They've also added a berm near town to keep the water in the creek. In addition to that, we have another smaller berm that we're constructing today with large sandbags. The newest berm will serve as the last line of defense if water were to break through. Plenty of moving parts in a small mountain town. Just watching the traffic through here, it's just interesting to sit and watch. As John Jesse looks out, he's waiting patiently for customers to walk inside his liquor store. We started it 31 years ago and still running it today. Jesse says he plans on selling his business. What could possibly be his last peak tourist season has been overshadowed by the possibility of floods. It doesn't bother me. I, I'm not really, really worried about it, it getting that bad. I mean, depending on what it does, but I'm not too worried about it. It's also a beautiful day in Lake City and in Hinsdale County. Lake City wants to remind visitors that although they are preparing for the worst, they are open. For now, Jesse will keep waiting to see what nature has in store for him and his business. This town, everybody. Ivan Rodriguez. Is like family. We know each other. Denver 7. Oh, those poor folks. And it's not just flooding they're worried about because of this year's heavy snowfall and avalanche damage. The Hard Rock 100 run has now been canceled. That race, which was supposed to take place next month, is a 100 mile ultra run over 13 mountain passes along the San Juan Range. Race officials are still looking for other activities for runners who have already booked their trip. And from the First Alert Weather Center, here's a look at your forecast now. We're looking at 70s and some 80s into the weekend, but uh, the weekend looks a little uh, like we're going to be dealing with some afternoon storms. Our Vada police need your help finding a driver. They say hit a 14 year old boy and then took off. It happened late last night along Sheridan near the Lamar Heights neighborhood. Police are searching for a black two door Toyota sedan with dark tinted windows. We do know that that teenage boy is expected to be OK. And in our growing Colorado, many communities are seeing growth at an unprecedented rate and three areas really are feeling the impacts in the far northeastern portion of Denver. We spoke with people who live in Montbello, Gateway, Green Valley Ranch and the area just south of DIA and they say there are issues with housing, job diversity, getting around town and just even getting groceries. Are there enough mm -hmm. grocery stores in this part of town? Well, not really, no. Just King Supers over there in Green Valley Ranch and then that's about it. Are there are they in walking distance? No. <laughs> no, no. Right now, Denver city leaders are meeting to discuss and vote on the far northeast vision plan for the next 20 years. And you can find the full community vision plan right now on the Denver it helps build core strength, works up a sweat and burns calories quickly. And no, we're not talking about a treadmill. Pole dancing, it's now making its way into the mainstream. There was even an international convention and competition here in Denver over the weekend. Denver 7's Megan Lopez goes 360 on the push to include it in the Olympic Games, and if that could really happen. There is a certain stereotype around pole dancing. For decades, it took place only in the darkened rooms of strip clubs, something considered too taboo to talk about. But with more women trying it and even classes teaching it, the sport is taking on more of a spotlight, making some wonder whether it should be added to the Olympics. So let's go 360. Supporters say pole dancing is a sport and deserves to be in the Olympics. Others say it could ruin the artistic aspect. An Olympics expert says the stigma is holding pole dancing back, while some believe just the exposure of an Olympics bid is enough. First, some context. 
Adding a sport to the Olympics takes years and overcoming numerous hurdles. Organizations have been working for about a decade to solidify pole dancing as a sport, even coming up with a 147-page document on rules and how to score athletes. In 2017, pole dancing passed its first big test when the Global Association of International Sports Federations granted it an observer status. But there's still a long way to go. It could happen in my lifetime. For the CEO of the International Pole Convention, Colleen Jolly, the sport's possibilities are endless. I think that that would give us a much higher profile. Jolly says it takes a lot of athleticism to perform. It's absolutely demanding. At this convention, we actually have a physical therapist on site. But it's also something that almost anyone can do. We had a disabled pole dancer showcase. We call them parapole. It also has a diverse range of competition options. Two or more performers okay. who are creating a group performance. Jolly hopes pole dancing will make it into the Olympics to destigmatize it. I started pole dancing in the clubs. But for former stripper Nia Burks. At the clubs, it was strict business entertainment. Pole dancing is more of an art than a sport. It functioned as something that I did for others. Now it is something that I do for me. She sees it as a way for women to explore their sexuality and is afraid that adding it to the Olympics is sort of watering it down. The more athletic, the more masculine, the more regimented we make it, the less we make it about women, their empowerment, uh, femininity. And she doesn't like the idea of a point system or a rule book defining it. Like angle, like point, like systems were applied. What would happen to the soul? So she's happy with where the sport currently stands. I would not like to see pole um, go to the Olympics. I've been covering the Olympics for um, 20 years. Meanwhile, Olympics columnist Alan Abrahamson doesn't think it stands a chance. I mean, pole dancing's chances of being admitted to the Olympics are somewhere between zero and none. Abrahamson says it is athletic. But that in and of itself is no reason to be admitted to the Olympic Games. Uh, I, would, I would bet way, way, way more money on the chances of esports being admitted. However, perception is everything in the Olympics. To say that there are a bunch of stereotypes around pole dancing would be kind. Particularly during the Me Too movement and allegations of sexual abuse in American gymnastics. The IOC is very sensitive to public opinion. At a time when it's trying to uh, be a forceful advocate for gender equality. The 2020 Olympic sports are already set, and Abrahamson says he doesn't think it will be added to 2024 either. It's not going to happen. I've been pole dancing for almost 12 years now. But for some, just the discussion is enough. We've been so underground for so long that I think even the, the road to the Olympics and getting that attention on pole dancing as like a thing is, is really good for us. Amy Guillen says pole dancing is a blend of several sports. She just hopes that people will start to see it as more than something reserved only for the strip clubs. I don't think that that's very uh, accepted in our culture for a woman to like be sexy and have ownership of her own energy in that way. Back at the Denver convention. For now, conventions happen on a small stage in ballrooms with humble but enthusiastic audiences. But whether it's time to take up a bigger stage is a decision that's still years away. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. So it's your turn. What do you think? Would you watch pole dancing competitions if added to the Olympics? Email us 360 at the Denver Channel .com or join the conversation on our Denver 7 Facebook and Twitter pages. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thank you for joining us. And check back here later tonight for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Andrew Heal.